lot of singing here tonight as we go through some of these songs. Let's start off with He Had Been Our Mess. We have one verse of it. And, uh, and I'll explain some things that I do when I'm leading that might be a help to you as well. I go so draw from the streams of salvation, give thanks to his great and holy name. sure a lot of you've heard these before. Uh, you, you probably have heard the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Uh, those of you that are familiar with the musical years ago called Sound of Music, uh, Maria taught those kids how to sing the Do, Re, Mi song. Do y'all remember that? And it was like, Do, a deer, a female deer, Re, a drop of golden sun, Me, a name I call myself, Fa, a long, long way to run. So a needle pulling thread, la a note that follows so, tea a drink with jam and bread, and that brings us back to do so mi re do. Anyway, she taught those kids. They didn't know what are you talking? What what's this all about? And she says, well, when you know the notes to sing, you can sing almost anything. And they learned how to sing these in about five minutes. I mean, they learn quick, you know. But anyway. Shape notes, as some of you are familiar with them, some are not, and I'll go over them in just a moment, came along in 1801. Let me just bring out some things here. When you look at the scale of that do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, that's the foundation of all of our music. I mean, every song that you can think of, I mean, I could go uh, mi, re, do, mi, re, do, so, fa, fa, mi, so, fa, fa, mi. What's that to the tune of? Three blind mice, three blind mice, see, all right? But anyway, that's, that's uh, again, these are things that can be helpful to you in learning new songs or even improving in songs that you've been singing. But there's that do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And uh, let me go to the next one right here. The do is shaped like a triangle, like a housetop. That's, that's the main note. That's the home note, home base. Upside down, if you think about it in baseball terms. A ray is a half circle, and a me is a diamond. And uh, uh, my, my wife, I tease her about this, that she's really only learned one shape. It's the one called, it's a diamond, and it's called me, me like diamond. So that's the only note that she's ever learned through all these years that we've been married. So uh, I'm in trouble when I leave here tonight. I know that, because... Anyway, fa is a right triangle, sol is oval, la is a rectangle, t is a cone, and then back to the do again, it's a triangle shape. But those are, those are things, if you ever decided you wanted to learn those, it does take some time, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that uh, at this time. But here's what Maria was teaching those kids. She was not teaching them shape notes. She was teaching them the singing names of do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. They're, they're called singing names, or they're called solfege, or they're called uh, syllables, but do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And that, was, that came along in the 11th century. So that's what she was teaching those kids, is how to sing the syllables, the singing names. 
Now the musical alphabet consists of seven letters in the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and starts over again. I realize that some of you know this already, but I have questions that come up to me a lot about where do the sopranos sing and where do the altos and tenors and basses sing? Well, here you have at the top here is the, the treble staff or the treble sign, the top staff there, and here's the bottom down here where the basses and tenors sing. But in the middle all of it is middle C. And, and those of you that maybe when you were growing up, you learned uh, to play an instrument or learned to play the piano, and middle C was the very first thing you were taught. Where's middle C? And middle C has this sound. That's C. And so, and then going to now looking at where sopranos are singing, they're singing up there at the high, the high notes at the top. And then the altos are right below them. And, and when the two parts sing, you have harmony. And then when you have the tenors, they're right in that area, and the basses are there, and when they sing together, there's harmony. We put it all together. Tonight, when we were worshiping tonight, we had harmony because we, I could hear the sopranos. I could hear the altos. I heard some tenor. Are you, you a tenor? I, I heard some tenor coming out. And, uh, and I was singing a little bit of the bass, and I could hear a little bit over here as well. But that's where we get the harmony. Now, I, want, I call this the floating major scale. The reason why I call it the floating major scale, I want you to notice Do, the triangle shape right here. This is in the key of C, and, and uh, when, I, when I give you this, at C. All right. Now, this is, uh, this is where Do is on C right here. I, have that right over. I don't think this uh, works on a string like this, the pointer, but anyway. I bet C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. All right, that's, that's, uh, that's the scale in the key of C. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. And we could call it either way. We call it by the, the, alpha, the names of the alpha in the alphabet, or we can call them by the number, or by the syllables that were created in the 11th century. But now, look where Do is right now. It's on C. And there's do. Now look, oh, it's up here now. It's up here on that first space. But over there, it's F. Now here's what it's here's what it sounds like now. Do is here. F do. And then we got here F G A B flat C D E F. It's up really high, and I'm not gonna do it again. Okay. All right. Now you see where do is right here. It's moved up to here at this spot, and then. I got it down here now, right here where it's a D, but there's five flats there. And anybody tell me what a flat does? Does it raise a pitch or tone by a half no, or lowers? It lowers it, doesn't it? All right, now here's where you see why they came up with the syllable method in the 11th century. You'll see it now. But now, we're, look where Do is now. That's home base. That's Do. Right. D flat, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, C, D flat. It's kind of hard to sing it like that, isn't it? But if you go, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So really, whatever key that a song is in, or whatever, you know, we have, uh, our songbook is, has songs in different keys. So if we have a song in the key of C, Do, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Or if we have a song in, key, in, in D flat, Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Regardless of what key we're in, we can sing the same singing names rather than trying to go through all that, calling it a D flat, E flat, F. And again, that's, that's as deep as I'm going to get with this tonight, okay? I just mainly wanted to show you there was a reason why th that they came up with the singing names. It makes it a lot easier in, in learning songs and singing songs. And, by the way, there were no shaped notes back then. They were all round notes. They were round. And uh, so, let me see what I have next here. Oh, that's, that's the key of G. And, uh, okay. Now, you might have heard me today get the pitch to a song. I did this. Instead of, instead of going do, re, mi, I went do, mi, do, mi, so. What? I thought we did. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, okay, you saw Doe, how Doe moves around. Doe could be down here on C, 
Doe could be up here on the F. Doe could be up on the T. I mean, the dough moves around, just like a football moves around on the field. I mean, when the ball comes out on the 20-yard line, or, or say the 20-yard line, and set the ball down, no one knows where to line up until you put the ball down on the field. Your offense, your defense, they know where to line up. But if you didn't have a ball out there, they'd all be like, okay, where do we go? Where do we line up? You put the ball down, okay, now we're ready to go. And then they start moving the ball down the field, and so now it's, it's moved up here. Now let's say it's on the 40-yard uh, line, and now we know where the ball is. Everybody knows where to line up. Well, with, with the dough, like this dough shape here, it can move around different places, but it's still, it's just a matter of, of, of knowing where to line up. Like, like when, I, when I start to lead a song, if I just started on the starting note that might start on the soul and I didn't give you the dough, a lot of people have trouble. Well, where's my note? Where's my note? But when I give the dough, everybody kind of knows where to line up. Let me let me just do this. I'm gonna my wife. I'm gonna do this to her. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound the dough. You give us a me. Dough. Now, won't you count the dough to me? Don't go to that right side. Yeah, dough. All right, let me go. Dough me. We'll give a soul to me. So she told me so. That, that's in the key of C. Let me give you a different key, key of E flat. Do, give me a me. Me, so, so. But everything relates to do. It's all relative to do. Wherever do is, whatever it sounds like, your me is going to be the same distance above it and your soul and all that. So when I give the starting note, I'm glad you brought that out about the, that comparison with, with football. All right. Uh, all right, let's, let's, let's do this song right here. Here, when we all get to heaven, it's in the key of C, but here I'm going to give you the do, the C. Do. Basses have that note. Do. Alto have me. Soprano. So. And tenor. Do. Sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion Friday. Key of C, where Do is going to be on C. Here's the bass note. Do, uh, alto, mi, tenor, so, soprano, do. Wonderful story of love. Tell it to me again. Wonderful story of love. Wake the immortal train. Angels of rapture announce. By, by giving it that note that I gave you, that tone, all the parts were able to sing it. But if I got up here and I just grabbed a pitch out of the air and I started off instead of one wonderful story of love, tell it to me again. Who's going to have trouble singing that with me and with the harmony? Basses are going to have a hard time getting it and probably altos. So, but the tenors will probably have no problem nor sopranos. So then we got only two-part harmony. Now if I got it really high, who's going to have trouble with it? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> that's about right. Sopranos and your tenors are going to have a hard time. So that's the importance of getting a song pitched the way that, that according to the book, the song book. Now some song books are different. Some will pitch a song maybe in, in, um, uh, in E flat. Some might pitch it in E. But it, Anyway, the, the, they're, what they're trying to do is get everybody where they can all sing their part, where you have four-part harmony. And because, again, what are we doing? We're, we're, we're singing a cappella. We're not using an, an instrument 
to, to accompany him at all. Here's a song here called We Have Come Into His House. I don't know if you know this or not. Do there is no surprise, no, 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 some training in music probably say you know we don't sing the the rhythm correct on that and here's what i'm talking about where it says the lord liveth and blessed be the rock now i'm, I'm going to highlight that right there the the word the and you see that note there's got two flags on it that means it's a 16 note it means don't park get off of it real quick the eighth note's the ones with one flag on them that's different, but the one with two flags, you have to get off of it really quickly. And here's the way that, that it should be sung, but we haven't learned it this way. And I'm not encouraging you to sing it right. I just want to point out to you that we don't sing it correctly. And here's the reason why the writer of the song wrote it this way, because he wanted to emphasize rock instead of blessed be. We, we go, the Lord liveth and blessed be the rock, but the Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock. See, see how it's emphasized the rock, and and then and let the Lord God, and let the God of my so really rock and God are being emphasized in this song way that it's written. That's just again, that's just in the rhythm part of it. And I just wanted to point that out that I usually have somebody come up to me and say, "We didn't sing that song correctly." Well, there's a lot of songs that we don't sing correctly. We sing them the way we've learned them, and when you learn them a certain way, they stick, don't they? So I don't, uh, I don't get, uh, uh, I don't have the time to really get involved with that to, uh, to change that. But I'm just pointing out that uh, there's there are a number of songs that we, if we went back and started trying to correct them, we would have confusion. We might as well. And, and what I do now, I just join the rest with, with it. So, uh, so it's it's not. I tell you what. The, the part, what we have to really keep in mind, we are, 
we are here to do the best we can to give God our best because we're here to worship Him. That's what it's all about. We're here to worship Him and give Him our best. And as a song worship leader, I, I know that when I'm leading, I'm not just up here leading. I'm up here leading God's people in worship. And so that they can give their best to God and so that I can give my best to Him. And because that is the ultimate goal is to please God and to glorify Him. But here's, here's the benefit we get from it. We, I mean, we benefit from it, don't we? As, as worshipers, we're edified. But first off, we keep in mind that we are worshiping him. And so let's go back and just sing it the way that we all have learned it. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of salvation be exalted. The Lord liveth, and blessed be the rock, and let the God of salvation be exalted. I will call upon the Lord. I, I tell you, I, the reason why I, I say that, I, I used to get really uh, worked up over this, that we'd have to sing every song just the way that it's written. And, I, and again, I know that what we need to do to correct it is just that if, if it's a brand new song, if it's a brand new song that no one's ever seen before, I'm going to do my best to teach it the way that it's written in the book, the way the, the songwriter intended for it to be. So we can learn it correctly and and so uh but when it comes to songs that we've been singing for years i just don't i mean it's it's just we we want to remember what our focus is it's upon god that's the, the primary thing and i'll tell you what i think the person that really helped me with this years ago and i won't go into a lot of detail about it but there was a man that had a well he could not carry a tune in the bucket and uh we were uh, he came to me one day and he said I want you to teach me how to lead singing. I want, no, I want you to teach me how to sing. And I just thought, there's no way. I've heard him in, in, in our worship service. He was just, he was all over the place. And, and, and he just, but anyway, he told me to be at his house one night. And when he told me to be there at a certain time, I was there. He stood about this tall, much taller than me. He was a former Marine, had been to Vietnam twice. And he said, be in my house at, oh, I forgot what time it was, 1,600 or 1,800 hours. I was there on time. But when I got to the door, his wife knew why I was there. She said, you guys go to the back room, close the door, because we don't want to hear you. And, and I, I, mean, I knew it was going to be bad. So I, I go back there. Would you find for me uh, Lord, become for me now in this hymn? Lord, become for me now. So he, he, uh, he sits down on his bed. And I'm standing there. In front of him, I don't, I don't know him very well. We just met just a, uh, a month or so earlier, and uh, we had just started a new work there. And we only had 13 members. We had 13 people, and uh, and seven of them were kids. So there were just three couples of us. And uh, uh, Lord, be come before Thee now. This is a song I went to in another hymn book, and uh, 422. Anybody? 422. 422. Yeah, maybe under here to tie it. Uh, 422. Yeah, Lord, be done before the man. 422. So <clears throat> here we are in his room, and, and here's what I did. I, I, back then, I just got this fish pipe. Brought this one out here and got out here. And I, and I did this. I, I went, I want you to hit this note. And he goes, what do you mean on that hit? <laughs> and I said, well, I want you to sing that note. Well, what do you mean sing it? And I said, well, let's call it, a, call it a do. He didn't know what do or raise or anything. I, I said, I'm like, so I went, do. And he went, do. I went, do. And he went, do. I went, do. And I got louder and I got closer to him. Do. And he went, do. I said, you got to come up. He said, what do you mean I got to come up? I said, you got to bring your voice, you gotta, the pitch of your, what you're doing, up to where I am. I went, do, he went, do. I said, so I went down there with him and went, do. And he went, do. I said, you got it. He said, I got what? 
<laughs> you got the note I wanted you to, to, to see. And he said, okay, teach me a song. And I said, well, I don't think we're ready to go there yet, but let's, so while we're on this song here, let's, let's do this. So I, I said, okay, that first note is this. Lord, and now by this time I got him up there on that toe, and he went, Lord, good. Teach me another note. <laughs> we, we, good, good. Teach me another note. I went, come, come. I said, yeah, that's good. We're on one note, that's all we've done so far. I said, now get ready to drop. He said, what do you need to ready to drop? I said, well, you need to go, come. And when I went, come, he went right back down to the basement where he was at the very start. And he stayed down there all the way till we got to the end of the song. And when I got through the song, I went, uh, shall we see thee, Lord? And he went, bang. <laughs> I went, bang. That's right. And, and he said, do you think I may believe this song at our next singing night? And uh, I, I said, why not? We're a small group, and uh, and so he learned this song. He finally learned the melody line all the way through it, and uh, he started leading that song for several months. And we'd have our singing night. And then he said, "I think it's time for me to learn another." One. And I said, "Okay, good." We did. He learned another song, and then he came to me one day. And he said, "I need to have five songs." I said, "Why do you need five songs?" He said, sometimes when I go out of town, I've worked the railroad for a number of years and I was traveling. He said, I might need to step in and fill in for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> anyway, he learned five songs. He learned the melody line through it. And he got up where he wasn't using the hands or anything, but he got where he could he could sort of do that and just keep rhythm. So he learned five songs and he used those five songs for about a year. He kept, a, he kept them in his wallet. He said, I got them here. I know some songs. So we'll leave. He finally came to me one day. He said, it's time to learn five more. <laughs> so I recorded them on a cassette tape. Dropped them off at his house one day. He worked in Albuquerque. And he would uh, listen to those every day going to work and coming home. So he learned five more. So he, came, he said to me one day, he said, uh, I, I want to... I want to thank you for what you've done for me. I said, what I've done for you? Yeah, I got what you've taught me how to sing these songs and to lead them and all that. And I said, I said, listen, I want to thank you for what you've done for me. And he said, I don't understand. I said, well, let me tell you. I've always emphasized the importance of getting the voice in tune. <coughs> but here's the difference. Your heart has been in tune from the very beginning. And you helped me to see that. That's about getting our heart in tune. I'm not talking about the blood pumping vessel in our body. I'm talking about what's up here between our ears. The, the mind, the, the, the heart is that part of us that thinks and reasons and understand the intellect. I said, you've had it, you've had it right alone. And I believe that once a person has their heart in tune, they'll want to get their voice in tune. And that's, that's the way that he did it. And so he really taught me a more, I, I believe I, I gained more from this than he did. It helped me a lot, and it helped me even for the years that have followed. So, uh, but anyway, he had, he had a brother that was, he couldn't say it either. He, he came to me one day and said, I want you to teach me how to sing like you taught my brother. I, and I had to, I like, well, you know, that won't be a problem. I can, I can teach anybody. Well, I was wrong about that. <laughs> and I finally just said to him, I said, you know what? I said, there are other things to do in the kingdom. Song leading is not, is not for you. But let me help you in some other areas. And he started giving, learning how to give talks and, and uh, at, at the table, led wonderful prayers. And, he was sometimes would fill in for me when I was away. But let me let me continue on here a little bit more here with some uh, more things here. A song, as we know, has lyrics, words, and to sing the words, we must either memorize or read them. And we all learned how to read when we were young. 
But a song also has musical notes made up of melody, harmony, and rhythm. And to sing the melody, harmony, or rhythm, we either must memorize the song like most people have or learn to read the music. And very few people know how to read music among, among our, our fellow Christians. Just haven't learned it. Older people that I've run across, I mean the generation ahead of me, Many of them have passed on. I've, I'm, I'm in Alabama, up in northern Alabama, I don't know how many people have come to me and said, we learned how to sing, how to sight read when we were little. That's what we did at night when we came in from working in the field at night. There was no television, but our father sat us down and taught us how to sing and to sing those syllables. And, uh, but again, go back to Colossians 3, 16, well, I haven't been there yet, but Colossians 3.16 is a, is a passage that we go to so often to point out to people that here's what, why we don't have an instrument in our worship is that we uh, are to sing. We are to sing with grace in our hearts. Ephesians 5.19, we're to sing and make melody in our hearts. But I really believe that some, there, there's, there's so much in this passage besides singing. But I think one of the most important things there is that teaching and admonishing one another. That's why I underlined that right there. Because when we are together in an assembly, we are there teaching and admonishing one another. And, and whenever I'm, I've been, I was around one place, uh, in one place where a man who was about 85 came to me and he said, you know, I have not been singing all, the, all, all of my life because I was told I couldn't sing. But he said, when he started realizing that the instrument is the heart. The, what we can tune, the heart of man, that's the, that's the instrument that we have been given, and we've got to get our heart right. And I remember him telling me, he said, I'm, I'm going to change the way I've been worshiping. I have been just sitting there listening to everyone else around me and not being involved in it. So anyway, I thought that was very encouraging to hear that. But there's a lot that's in that passage right there. But the command from God to sing requires learning something about it and, uh, and again, that was what I was asked to do tonight is just go, or just go through a few things that might be helpful to you. When you look at a song without a note on it, without a wor any words on it at all, let me show you what the songwriter sees when they open up. They get their music paper out, and they've got the grand staff there, and, and they put in that treble staff sign, that treble uh, G clef sign. They put in that bass staff sign, and the, the space in between right here is for the words, for the lyrics. And, uh, and, and then they'll come in with the key signature to determine the pitch of the song so that all four parts can sing. And then they put in the time signature for the rhythm. And then they'll put in their notes. And like right here on God is Love, this right here is in the key of, of D. And uh, do. And, and the, these notes are like, Do, Mi, Fa, Sol, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Come, let us all unite to sing. You've heard that, haven't you? All right, you've met, you learned that. And then we put, they put in the alto notes. And then I'm going to have my wife sing along. And Sylvia, I'll sing along with on the alto. Come, come, let us all unite to sing. All right, let me just do the melody by itself, soprano. And then y'all come in next. Come, let us all unite to sing. Come, let us all unite to sing. There we got two parts singing. All right, let's put in, let's put in that tenor part. Keith, you want to give it a stab? Okay, all right. All right, the rest of y'all sing that soprano part. Come, ready? I'm going to do the soprano first. Come, let us all unite to sing. Now do it again, add the alto. Come, let us all unite to sing. Now let's put in the tenor. Come, let us all unite to sing. You see, now the, the, the room is filling now with sound of harmony. Now we'll put in the bass part, which is, Come, let us all unite to sing. Now start back over sopranos. Come, let us all unite to sing. Put in the alto. Come, let us all unite to sing. Put in the tenor. Come, let us all unite to sing. And the bass. Come, let us all unite to sing. See, it's filling up. That's the four-part harmony right there. Now let's do it one more time, then we're going to go right into the third verse. Come, let us all unite to sing. 
Come, let us all unite to sing. Come, let us all unite to sing. Come, let us all unite to sing. Now sing the third verse. How happy is our portion here. God is love. His promises are spirit cheer. God is love. He is our sun and shield by day. Our help, our hope, our strength and stay. He will be with us all the way. Our God is love. God Sing a song that you know, that you know well, and, uh, and you do that very, very well. Um, have y'all done this song, Just As I Am, I Come Broken? Okay, well, I've, I've got it here, and rather than, I just got part, I have part of it, but I want to mostly be familiar with Just As I Am. Let's have, it starts off with sopranos, it adds the alto, and then it adds the tenor, and then it adds the bass, and, and you'll, you'll recognize this part. Now, the last part of the song uh, you may not, but we'll give it our best shot here. Do, so, mi, do, soprano. Just as I am, I would be lost. But mercy and grace, my freedom are. And now to something that I, I run into a lot. I'm just, what I've tried to do uh, this afternoon or yesterday, trying to pull in things that I work on with other congregations, and, and I will talk to them about tempo. And here's what I get most of the time when I ask, how are your songs tempo-wise? How, how and, and here's what I get, slow. We, we sing our songs slow. And... Uh, and uh, I say all of them, and some will say all of them. And because when I start off with the question, what seems to be the problem here? They'll say our songs are slow. Only had one place where somebody blurted out when I asked the question, what's the problem here? And somebody said, we just don't know how to sing. <laughs> that, was, that was the answer I got. But and you know what? They were right. <laughs> so, you know, I didn't have Vicky with me on that trip, and I said, oh, it was a long week. Because she helps me a lot with the alto, singing that part. But then there's songs that are fast. There's songs that are meant to be sung slow. And then, uh, like the one we did tonight, Ed. Oh, yeah, that's what we did, Mindy. We did that slow, but it's meant to be slow. Uh, he's in our midst. Uh, Roger led that long ago, the very first song, which I really think is a great idea to sing an upbeat song at the very beginning. That sets the tone of our worship. Is it really a song, a song of praise? And so that was good tempo. And then there are songs that are meant to be sung in a moderate tempo or speed. And, and again, the most of the problem that I find in places is slow. Let me just give you an example. My brother called me one day and he said uh, that the brethren want me to teach them song meeting class 
And uh, so I said, well, how many sessions are you going to have with them? And uh, I thought he would tell me, well, I'll get to do it for four weeks. Or he said, I'll get one, one session. And I said, well, just forget about the pitch height. Just forget about pitch. Forget about beat patterns. I said, I would, what I would do, I would just take the song book, open it up, and open the very first song, and look at the title, and just say, is this fast or slow? I need the interview that one. Fast or slow? Slow. Slow, why? Because it's a song, it's a prayer. It's a prayer, I mean, it's just, you know, and then what about to God be the glory? To God, it's going to be fast, it's going to be upbeat, isn't it? So there we got two of them. So let's, let, let me just demonstrate, or let's just sing them together and notice what we're talking about here. <laughs> Think about this first song. It's a song of, of prayer. So I need the every most Yeah. 
hearts beat. Go, there's that triangle sacred place. Go, out to the altitude. Carry me, soprano song. Christ for the world we see. something 
here about those vertical lines. See where I have the red arrows? That's a measure bar. And every time we get in the measure bar, it starts with beat one to the right of the measure bar. It's like jumping the hurdles. You come down on one on the, on the, on the other side of the mm -hmm. measure bar, and that starts those beats. You got one, two, three, four, and then go back to one, two, three, and four, and then back to one, two, three, four. And then you got a note in there that takes up a whole measure. It's four beats, doesn't it? And the beat pattern helps the song leader, and even though that the audience to know that war. <clears throat> I get the tempo moving when I have a beat pattern, and I give that note the right number of beats. But the beat pattern is what's helping to move the song along. So let, let's sing this here. I think I've got more than this part of it here. Do, mi, so. And we'll start here on that. Onward. See, it's going to be one. Onward. Now, now, there is a, one thing I, I always do is, is I give a preparatory beat right before we start on beat one. It's always the beat before beat one, which would be beat four. So it's up here. It's to get a breath. It's like, that way you can start with me. Like right now, I want you to start with me on beat one. On me, on me. Got to come ahead of me. On me. Let's start with me on beat one. I drop my hand. On me. So you, you're a little bit behind. A little bit behind. Good. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now here's what it is. Here's what Here's what I do. That's pretty good, but it helps surprise me. Uh, but when I do this, um, and that's a preparatory beat. It's like I said, on your mark, get set, go. Don't be so ready. Onward, Christian soul. That's a good one again. That's real good. That's real good. Don't be so. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as you want. Is B and C, which is T-Do. 
But when you go, when you move the ball around, when the ball moves on the football field to another position, you're in a different key now, you start having these flats, then that's when you have to start. You got to, 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 to have a major scale, me and Bob always have to have a half step between them. And T and Doug has to be a half step between them. And that's when the flats come into it. And again, I, that was back in my early, early slide. Yeah, let's, let's uh, let me back up now a little bit. Let me just close out with this right here. Uh, like, like I said, I wanted y'all to be uh, familiar. Let, let, let's do this song here, and we're done that final year. So you'll be happy. <coughs> with alto lead. Uh, but when you have a two on top, here, here's the thing about, you see numbers up there, like a two on top. Don't worry about the one on the bottom, that four. Just always look at the number on top. If it's a two, the song is going to be in a two-beat rhythm. One, two, one, two, one. You've got to get a feel for rhythm. If it has a three on top, it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four. If it has a four on top, you've got to feel the four beats. One, two, three, four. When you get into six, nine, and twelves on top, let brother or kid, let them explain that to you. There, there's a little bit more. It's still the same beat pattern. Two beat, three beat, or four beat pattern. It's just it's compounding more beats than one. And that's that's I'm getting a little bit too deep right there. Uh, I, I saw like one be wonderful there. It's in six four times. Like when with the Savior we enter the glory. One two three four by six by being in a two beat rhythm. When with the one two rather than get every one. When with the Savior we enter the glory. Let all men be wonderful there. But it's compounding three beats in the one. When with the Savior we enter the glory. So when you have a song that has a six or a nine, like have thou the way, Lord, it's nine four time, or you got a twelve eight or twelve, like walking along a D, always take the top number and divide it by three. And that will tell you which beat pattern to use. That's if it's a six four time or six eight, divide it by three, it's two. Two beat. Jesus is tenderly calling thee home. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Or if you have how thou way on it, nine on top. Or walking in sunlight. Nine, nine, eight, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Walking in sunlight. Nine divided by three, three B. Have a twelve on top divided by three, four B. Walking alone that evening, then you the sky is the floor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. So anyway, that's that's just a real quick uh, summary of compound rhythm. But always keep in mind, when you see a two or three or four on top, think beats. Think that way. That helps you a lot. That helps a lot of people in the audience follow the leader better. The leader will notice it. So that, that's good. Let, let's start with singing the act to end with this. And one little exercise there, and then we'll, we'll close out for tonight. Yep, uh, sing it again. Do, 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 do,
quarter notes, and the threes on the top now will be with a three three beat pattern. Down, out, up. You there with me? Down, out, up. Do, do three beat. Stem goes up for soprano, stem comes down for the altos. Basses are so dull. 